Welcome to Desert Brutality 2021, day one. We have the normal cadre of amazing people here with us today, traveling from all around the world. We've got Finland, we've got Switzerland, we've got France even. <laughs> <laughs> so how about we all talk about how you got here and what you're using today for Desert Brutality, like what, one month after Finnish Brutality? Mm -hmm. yeah. I said in my video, I did all eight stages yesterday because I had to do the staff match and I literally opened the box, pulled out my What Would Stoner Do carbine that still had finished mud on it, <laughs> rubbed it in the Utah dirt and went to shoot. It worked great, but let's talk through it. So should we start with the, how about we start with Bloke? Okay, so I'm shooting a Cold War Division with everyone's favorite garbage tier product improved, <laughs> AR-18. This one's a Hauer, so Japanese and- It's the good one, it rattles a lot. Yes. It smells of the 70s, it looks like the 70s, it would go very well with the garbage tier hotel I stayed in in Vegas uh, a couple of nights ago. Um, what else to go with that than a Browning High Power? Mm. Also a... A oh, fantastic example of Browning High Power. Yes. Borrowed from only the finest collection. Absolutely. <laughs> Zeroed with a hammer and a file. Um, this is not my commercial one. And Carl's NDM86 Chinesium Dragonov in 308, which... Uh, I believe they're quite rare here. They are days. quite they're rare in the United States. Expensive, yeah. but uh, yeah, but I'm uh, wearing modern gear, sort of high-speed, low-drag Varosaleka gear with a prototype uh, recon chest rig, which uh, is pretty comfortable. That looks pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I'm looking forward to this coming out because I'm sure I will buy one. <laughs> um, with mags stuffed everywhere, of course, yeah. and uh, yeah. I've not fired this rifle before, ever. I've never shot an AR-18. It'll be great. Ever, and I'm sure it's gonna be a lot of fun after 24 hours door-to-door -door travel. A couple of things I love about that. One, the very first Desert Brutality, Yari, you were you were doing prototyping of now a Vars Delica product, the jeans. Yeah. And so here we are prototyping another Vars Delica <laughs> product at Desert Brutality. This is the test bed now. Yeah. This is like your race course. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, um, you, you can, and you can also do the market testing for local people. Like, what do you like about that? Stop people in a match and people are like, yeah, it's Absol cool. <laughs> I love, Bloke, that you talked about product improved because the AR-18 was actually a cost reduction. Can we make this thing cheaper for everybody yeah. thing? But the advertising, there's advertising saying it's an improvement on the AR-15, which is like, well, it's the 18. It's three better. It is three better. <laughs> so what'd you bring from France over there? All right, I am going all out on the French guns and I'm hoping like we have a small chance of total glory and a large chance of catastrophic failure here. Um, I have my FAMAS, of course, which I am extremely confident in. I love this thing. It shoots great. Uh, for my DMR, I have one of the FRF2s that has recently come into the country. Um, I was fortunate enough many years ago to get the appropriate APX scope for it, so I have that waiting when the rifles got imported. Um, that scope is a 3.85 power, essentially a ZF4, mm. uh, with a very simple German post reticle. It's a, a simple and kind of crude scope, and so hopefully it'll work really well. The rifle seems fantastic. We'll see how that goes. And then... I think here's where the failure comes in. Oh yes, <laughs> I have a holster full of potential here. My MR73. Uh, this will either go very well or a complete dumpster fire. <laughs> His, double be fun on the pull. His double action pull is better than my single action pull on the Browning, just to put it in perspective. There is a chance of, of glorious success. It's not, it's not hopeless. Well, you are bringing the Elan. Yes. On pas pas. <laughs> <laughs> Yari, how are you? What we got here? Um, yeah, I have uh, what was Stoner do, borrowed from Ian. The, the, the commando. The, oh, That's a, uh, yeah, the, commando. the shard one. Like, when I picked this, it was like, okay, I know this, it, because it's pretty much the same what I have. It weighs like half of what yours does, because I haven't piled lasers and stuff onto the end of that one. Ah, yeah, true. but like, you would need those, but you know, <laughs> without them, great gun. Uh, so uh, I'm really confident uh, with this. The pistol, I have the, the uh, Kaido Roland Special, very similar setup what I have at home, which is good. And then the DMR is the the Robinson Arm and like three of it XCR. And I just kind of got this on my hands today, so it's really interesting hey, to boom. see how it how it works. But I'm really kind of enthusiastic about this. 
inappropriate inappropriate time for a joke. Once again, United States is Europe's arsenal because <laughs> the NDM eighty six is for me, the XCR is for me, right? And the, your pistols for me too because that's how it yeah. works for travel. But yeah. here we are, like right, same thing yeah. again. So yeah, I, I think that's a great gun. I think you're gonna have a lot of success with both of those. Yeah. And he's gonna have like plus five percent speed from the. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, and that's yeah. Ian's uh, sling there does yeah. add speed. I like that. Thing. That is yeah. a speed sling. <laughs> for yeah, sure. So I'm good to go. Set for a success. So now what you're seeing here is we have a multiple different divisions this year. We have Classic, which we don't have here. I'm going to get some footage of Classic later. That's like World War II stuff. Cold War, which is bloke. And Ian, you got Yari, which is an armored plus P, which also requires here we have a helmet. And then the only division that doesn't have three guns this year, because all these other divisions are pistol, DMR, doesn't have marksman rifle, and your carbine. The only division that's not that is partisan. And that's you, Yeni. Yeah. So what are you shooting? So I'm shooting a new what was do, hmm? and it has the Vortex uh, 1 to 10 scope, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll see how it goes. I haven't shot a full match with the what would stoner do ever. I haven't shot with Vortex scopes ever. It's a new type of reticle for me, and then I'm shooting a Glock 19 with a red dot, so that's similar to what I have at home. So we'll see how it goes. I have never shot to be on 300 meters, and today I'm doing it with uh, 223. Yeah, you are. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. So I in, have a lot of ammo. In this regard, you borrowed this one from Russell Fagan, Sinister yes, Rifleman, yes. and uh, and you've got 77 grain bullets for long range mm -hmm. and 55 grain bullets for the closer stuff. Yeah. I think that gun's gonna rock, yeah. honestly. That's a good configuration. Yeah, uh, Russell did a really good job with it yesterday, so I, I hope that's gonna rub on me. Like, he's, he's good performance. And you don't have to wear any dumb plates or helmets. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> all right, you guys have all completed four stages yes. of day one. Yep. Yes. And what I wanna hear are your thoughts and experiences and how it went for you. And we'll kind of do what we did before. We'll go ahead and start with Bloke and uh, We'll go from there. So the first stage of the day, I can't even remember anymore. Oh, the Casarda drill. How did that go for you? It went all right. 16 kilo hey. kettlebell Ooh. instead of 20 was easier to throw. Um, always the joy of borrowing a gun and not knowing where I, where it's gonna shoot for me because everyone's yep. zero is a little bit different and uh, hadn't had a chance to test fire it. So I was learning that on the clock and ended up having to sort of walk it in, but we more or less fixed hey. that yep. for the rest. But that went all right. I just Good. didn't quite get over the last fault line, but yeah. That was all right. Yeah. How about the rest of you? Anyone have any thoughts on Kassar drill? Yari? Uh, that's always my favorite. Okay. Uh, I think the 16 hey, kilos boom. was a bit of the low end. It but was. Still, when we are in a higher ele elevation, you got your kind of heartbeat up. Yeah. 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 So, and I also kind of got the DMR first time on my hands, and I was like, okay, it's a good gun. Is it? Easy Ooh. day, and I was really happy with the performance. It seems to me there's some historical authenticity in terms of Finnish military experience to <laughs> showing up at the battlefield, then discovering what gun you will be using, yeah. and it may or may not be something you've ever shot before. Yeah. <laughs> Just be glad it's not a 7 millimeter. Gun. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll get back to this more, but that was your first time using this on the clock, right? Uh, Ian, your uh, the FRF this thing that you're hugging, loving. Yes, it yeah. was. I like this rifle. Rifle good, pistol bad. That's the day in it. <laughs> to be honest, it is one of my very favorite stages as well. Cool. Um, and I really like the fact that every brutality hey, match boom. has a different flavor of Casarda drill. Yeah, it does. And the, the precision version today was a new and different challenge, um, and it went extremely well. It's really interesting how it lends itself to be different but the same. Yeah, like we can just twist it around and make a whole new version of it. Yep. So, hey, Yanu, how about you? Well, for me, the kettlebell was still heavy, <laughs> even though it wasn't like 25 kilos, but I, I could still feel it. There was the option to take the smaller kettlebell, but... Yeah, there was. Yeah. You can't do that. That's, yeah, that's, that's not, not a real fun. option. That doesn't yeah. line up with system. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, I, I think I got out of breath like already on the first throw because of the elevation. <laughs> We're at like 5,000 feet here, 5,500? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so and in, we live at sea level right. in Finland. That's, so. For the Europeans, that's like 1,800 meters elevation. And it is extremely okay. dry. Yeah, it is. I'm, yeah. I'm starting to lose my voice a bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's been... Go ahead. Oh, okay. It's been a long day. Long <laughs> and, hot and a dusty day. Someday in the future, we're going to do all eight <laughs> the same day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How about sled drag? Let's go with Yari on that for a sled drag. Oh, that was my favorite. Wait, no, you said the other one was your favorite. What? They're all his favorite. <laughs> yeah. They're all yeah, your favorite? The Gus Arnett drill is like, like the... the 
kind of it's an institution. Okay, yes, it's it is. like like the Star Wars. It's, it's if we had a standard, yeah. it's a standard. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But like uh, um, for kind of state's perspective, pretty simple and a lot of movement, and I and I love that sledge. It was proper good and kind of. It was nice to have the Vodvi Stoner do mm. because it felt like my own rifle mm -hmm. and you just kind of got the dot on on the target and start sending bullets out. And if I recall, you were like ding, ding, ding. Yeah. I think you were one for one. Yeah, yeah. I really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. Ian? Uh, well, there's no DMR on that stage. No. And thus it didn't go all that well for me. <laughs> okay. Um, honestly, the decision to take a revolver here was... Something that I knew would be a big risk, and it's turning out to, yeah, it may not have been the greatest idea. Yeah. Um, I kind of did everything slowly. Um, I was out of whack with rifle shooting. The Hamas is normally a very nice, accurate rifle for me, but I had a lot of trouble making trips with it. Um, unfortunately, ran out of ammo at the very last round where you drop your mag and fire one last round and abandon the rifle. Well, I dropped the mag and the chamber was empty. Oh. <laughs> so, reload there. I, and ultimately, I part out and ended up with eight minutes and penalties for not making the last set of pistol hits. That so, is brutality right there. That was disappointing. <laughs> um, like, when the, the par time went off, I was literally back at the pistol targets with the revolver in my hand ready to fire. And, uh, so disappointing, but it's a good it's a good stage. The sledge was a beast. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's interesting when you're watching other people run that sledge, it's like, you know, it's just like whoop, and they're done. And when you're doing it yourself, you're like, how many how, the part time's gotta have been up since you <laughs> started the sledge. It just won't end. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I was barely moving with the sledge. That That's sledge well. weighs more than you do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we started with people. Yeah. And I noticed that uh, for you the zero is not the same well, as yep. for me. Same thing. So the, I had to aim uh, like uh, on the ground in front of the peppers to okay. get the pepper falling. And then it was also like a bit to the right. And then. Uh, I got to the sledge and noticed like this is really heavy <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> I made a wrong decision on shooting uh, the rifle with the, on the knee. I should have gone prone. I saw everyone else go prone and I thought like this this is a really easy <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> easy target. But uh, yeah, I, I uh, underestimated how the sledge and the elevation will affect my breathing. Overall, like, yeah. Energy. Yeah. That's one of the things I think is really interesting to watch people shooting brutality matches in general mm -hmm. is the first time maybe they don't use support when it's there. Yep. As the match goes on or the next time they come, anytime there's anything to rest on ever, they're resting on it. Like Because yeah. <laughs> anything that supports you, anything that lets you catch your breath is a good thing. Yeah, yeah. and I learned it now. <laughs> this was my first uh, real full brutality match. Well, well, okay. so, yeah. that's true. Yeah. yeah. Bloke? Um, I love that stage actually. Um, I ended up with a penalty though because I underestimated the, the big steel. I was like, it's big steel, this trigger's crap, but fine, I'd be shooting the poppers really well. And what could go wrong? That. <laughs> 60 seconds. Ding. Um, and then ran like, the, ran like the wind, dragged the sled. Um, not. Uh, Yari's a complete beast with this stuff. Yeah. And he absolutely, you absolutely rocked that. Um, and you were you were faster than me and with no penalties, which was awesome. But I learnt my always rest the rifle lesson last time in 2021, where I had what I thought were complete comfort zone targets at the start of the stage. I thought I'll just take these off hand rather than rest on a on a tank trap, and that was a big big error. Mm -hmm. So I think everyone does it once. I think that's one of the things. Every A lot of the times when you come to a brutality match, these things look like such easy presentations, yep. mm -hmm. but they turn out not to be. Yeah. And that's, it's really alarmingly, uh, it wakes you up real fast. They're like, that should be nothing as you miss. Like, yeah. it's yeah. really strange. Yeah. So then after that, we went to the grenade, the grenadier, which is the, the tennis ball launcher, but it's a pretty good simulator. It's kind of fun. It's a fun stage gun. One of the things about that kind of stuff is it makes sure that you remember that you're here to have fun. Because that's like, you can get you can get round around the axle on some of this, and then you shoot that thing, you're like, the tennis ball goes flying. Did anyone make their grenade? Yeah, yeah. you should have. No. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that was... Yours yeah, kind of bounced up and down or something. Yeah, and I tried oh. to catch it when I started <laughs> to run, and I was thinking that I broke back in. Broke back in, and then started kind of, that there was a, said that you 
<laughs> you couldn't do that, but I didn't catch it. So this stage is pretty straightforward, right? You shoot the grenade, you shoot some pistol, and then you move on to the VTAC. Now, at that point, you had your pistol zeroed for you. Yeah. So you were better off, right? Yeah, much better. It, was, it looked like you just kind of cleaned yeah. it. Anyone have any thoughts on that stage? I mean, that one's pretty straightforward. Pistol bad. That's pistol bad. <laughs> you no, were reloaded. Did you have... Are you have speed rollers? I didn't notice. I have HKS speed loaders. Okay. Yeah. Um, the the MR73 uses K-frame speed loaders. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I looked at that, and my stage plan was, I bet I can make the grenade shot. And then I've got two sets of four, four hits, six rounds, easy. I'll reload between the car. And the reality was entirely different. Um, <laughs> I ended up doing, it was like 28 rounds to make 12 hits, which is the, um, got to the VTAC. Fortunately, at the VTAC, the FAMAS is, is a very nice, easy rifle to shoot. Um, I wasted a ton of time with the pistol. Yep. And I don't really know why. Like, it's always been pretty good for me. Just my pistol shooting today was um, The RO happily gave me a gave me a 10-second warning when I was towards the bottom of the VTAC. Like, yeah. Got 10 seconds. I'm like, I am not going to par out on another one. Screw this. And, and sped up and made my last two hits. Yeah, so, totally. Mike? Um, they went mostly all right. The pistol stuff. Um, a lot of people would fire the fire the tennis ball and wait and mm. to see what happened. Mm. And I was just like, poof, yeet, oh, no. no. <laughs> That's a really good didn't, point. No, yeah. I didn't. I, I just like I just wasn't interested. I was going to find out it's when I was. Gonna hit there. You, you're not that lucky. <laughs> no, <laughs> poof, go. Yeah. So uh, I was chasing the tennis ball practically. Um, pistol went okay, and then um, I thought because of the VTAC wall, because we're going to get down low, I'll use the 20 round mag that that had been declared as uh, as, as, as working. Still confident in that declaration. Mm -hmm. uh, it may need to be cleaned because it had a, a, light, a light little dusting of moon dust inside. As does basically everything now. Yeah, except that mag seemed to not like it, um, and it wouldn't it wouldn't feed, and it looked okay, so I put it back in and wasted time. I should have just just dumped it at the slightest hint. So that cost me time. But then uh, the VTAC wall went well, and I shot it with the irons because I've got see-through see -through mount and nice. avoid the height overbore nonsense. And yeah. it was it was close yeah. enough. But that was a cool stage. They've all been cool stages. Yeah. Well, the yeah, last, stage, last stage of the day was the DMR, which is the one that has targets out to 550, mm -hmm. and then carbine after that. And uh, we'll go to Ian last on this one. <laughs> uh, bloke, you used the SVD, the drug, the NDM86. Yep. Uh, zero wasn't 100% perfect still, but with the... Like, what is it? Ten centimeters at hundred yep, meters. Every click, per click yep. mm -hmm. which is insane. They're very gross. Four, four minute clicks. Four mower, four mower clicks, basically. What do you want? Right, right, right. <laughs> but actually, um, Joe, the RO, was absolutely brilliant at walking walking people yep. in. Um, finding the targets was tricky with that optic. It's uh, not a modern optic and four power. No. Nope. Um, and on the last one, I couldn't quite identify it, but I had a reference and just trusted Joe's calls and, and walked it in. And I was clicking Cold War style. And that worked though. You that actually, worked. you got you got all the hits. Yep. So, and with the spotter, the Dragunov did do you, do you well. It you did leave a target well. on the field. And you got them all. The bipod, the Harris bipod on it was a good call. That's one of the things when I was looking at, cause you're borrowing that rifle from me. And I have the original Russian bipod for that thing. And I went out in the field with it. And I was like, I don't want to put this on anyone. Like this is the <laughs> worst thing ever. And I talked to Fagan, and I'm like, Harris bipods are around way early. Can I throw that on there? He's like, yeah, that fits Cold War. So that original Russian bipod is almost worse than not. Yeah. Like, so that Harris made a difference. I'm glad yeah. that helped. And then use the 30 round mag on the AR-18 yep. and then actually use the optic for the first time. Nice. And made, made, uh, Made good hits. And what was it you said my special power was? Uh, doing really well with totally obsolete garbage rifles. Yeah, <laughs> totally. There are worse special powers to have. Yari, you used the XCRM. That seemed to do well too. Yeah. Yeah, that was like working really well. And I, I was pretty nervous about the stage because I haven't done that much of the long range stuff. Yep. And like not shooting that much beyond 300. So I was. I was nervous, but I, I just used the reticle. The the RO was uh, phenomenal of uh, guiding the the corrections, and it was surprisingly easy. You did really well. Yeah. You said that gun kind of recoiled like five five six almost. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw the targets like kind of after a short left, like 
the impact on the, on the closer ones. That's one of the things that matters with that. If the gun doesn't move a lot, or you don't, if, even if you miss, if you have, if you're able to stay in the field of view, you yeah. can see your splash and adjust. Which you using the AR in an SDM role probably yeah. had that. Like you didn't miss much either, but if you splash, you can recover. Mm -hmm. So you used a one to ten vortex. Yeah, and I, I had it on ten, and uh, Russell showed me his. Um, his Trelog, uh, no elevation. Right. What it, what's it called in? Ballistic data. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I learned the numbers by heart, like half a line, then the first small line, the second big line, and the four, fourth big line. So that's that's what I had in my head, like going through to the states. I was really nervous because I haven't shot with two to three beyond 300 meters ever. But uh, Russell and uh, the RO really helped me there. Nice. That's one of the things, that's another thing that's interesting is like, so watching this, now I've watched you shoot that gun, I watched a couple people shoot SDM style ARs with 77 green bullets. And I was around when that program was going on in the early 2000s and stuff. And I, it, there's a lot of rifles that did well at the, the DMR stage. But those 77 grain setups with the AR is, those things are freaking death machines. Like you, they, because the recoil is minimal, they're accurate enough, they have a good ballistic coefficient, they have enough mass at 77 grains to have impact. And out to 600, it's just like, it's amazing. Anyways, Ian shot it too and we're good. So <laughs> thanks for staying tuned. Um, we'll have day one tomorrow. No, all right, all right, all right. All right talk about your rifle. Uh, so I, I went four for four, four shots, four hits, yeah. cleaned it. Took a little bit longer on the carbine. The last 200 yard shot with the carbine flummoxed me for a few moments. Um, the thing, honestly, to me that made that possible on this was the fact that the BDC works. Yeah, I so, saw you tuning that. I was like, when you turn that, I'm like, oh, God, those work? Yeah. <laughs> so what's interesting to me is I got that feedback from Henry Chan. Mm -hmm. When Nine Hole did a video on the FRF-1, which is exactly the same scope but cammed for 7.5. Yes. And this is an old scope. This is essentially a ZF-4 from yeah. World War II. It was designed for the MOS-49. Um, it's 3.85 power. It's got a gigantic German post reticle, mm -hmm. but it's got this elevation BDC on the side in 50 meter increments. And what Henry told me was, he was like, oh, of course it was amazing. I clicked it to the range and I hit. Mm -hmm. And I clicked it to the next range and I hit. And I did that on this. I had a 200, a 300, a 400. And then our last target was 550 yards, which is essentially 500 meters. Yep. And so I figured two, three, and four are close enough. And I just did two, three, four, and five. And each shot, I made the adjustment, held center of the target, or in the case of four and five, where I was like, pretty sure the target, I, I think it's that. It looks <laughs> orange. Like it's only not even four power, but I think it's that. And um, Canadian surplus ball ammo, or Australian surplus ball ammo. I think he went one for one, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Four shots, four hits. And what was the music we had playing? Ah, uh, <laughs> La Marseillaise. <laughs> But it really is a weird thing to think about this because you and I have shot a lot of historic stuff at you too, bloke. It's How often does a BDC actually work? Never. Ever. Then. Ever. And that's the only time I've ever seen it. Yeah, there are two now. It's this and the FRF1. Yep. That's it. I could say the ZF4 doesn't. No. You put the ZF4, you zero to 100 meters, you go to 200 meters, you set it to two, and you're like, I'm high, I'm high. You set it back to 100, then you just aim high, and then we go to two, it shoots at three. It's like, it's like, what the hell? I yeah. should point out my zeroing on this. I took this to 200 yards. Yeah. I zeroed it at two, mm -hmm. which is the official procedure. Yep. I had not actually shot this beyond 200 yards, mm. and the 500 meter setting hit on the first shot, which is some sort of strange sorcery. All right, the French have some sort of magic power with BDCs because no one else seems to pull it off. And that, I watched you do it, so I believe it. Like, yeah. It wasn't too bad on the scope on your Dragunov. The NDM was okay, too. Now, what's interesting about that, we're almost done in a minute, but the, the, on the Dragunov, so that one has the Romanian LPS on it because it's a standard 4X, same mount. And I use that because it's not a collectible scope, to be honest with you. But it did track. Mm -hmm. yeah, and when I tested it, it tracked, but not like that. Not as well as that. Not like no. that. It tracked to close enough to make them scared and hit them again, right? Yeah. This was literally, think. Bye -bye. Pretty rad. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, anyways, any other thoughts? This is day one. We got more, four more tomorrow. Yeah. Right. It's awesome. Yeah. It I love yeah. it. You the said, day chases are really good. You said yeah. tomorrow is all DMR, right? No. <laughs> but we can make it all. Yeah. Can we like, shoot the pistol please. stuff with the DMR and like yeah. the carbine you stuff. Got, you got DMR. a DMR yeah. spinner tomorrow. Let's, you know, go with that. Be yeah. happy you got a DMR spinner, okay? <laughs> that spinner rue the day it was. You will, you will definitely. The fires of hell. You will crush that spinner tomorrow for sure with that thing. So. Uh, thanks for watching this. We got day two tomorrow. It's a pleasure to have all of you here, and I love hearing what you have to say about the match. And hopefully, you out there enjoyed watching it. More to come.